this disappointment will last a lifetime. Making the customer happy is so 1999. Forget it. Are you really supposed to respect those who pay your wages? After spending an eternity researching, I found the one thing that really angered people when dining at cafes. But I was a little disappointed at the mere 300 word count per complaint on TripAdvisor and Yelp. Seriously, these waiters lack creativity in destroying the dining experience. Not a single person was set on fire, not a single case of food poisoning. What are they doing? The same amateur hour complaints kept coming up, along with generic symptoms, being ignored, rude staff, oh my god. I mean seriously, if you're going to do something, for god's sake, do it properly. What disappointed me the most was that almost all of these businesses were still in business. Meaning that these complaints were nothing but a quick vent in a fit of rage for not feeling important enough on arrival despite spending a mere 450 on a basic coffee. In a world where constant scrutiny is upon us 24-7, even doing a terrible job is something we can't get right. A far more impressive variant could have been adding salt to the coffee rather than sugar, then serving it to the customer upon request of a remake, bringing it to the table and spilling it over their newly served food by accident. This escalates into a typhoon of chefs going ballistic in the background as they need to remake the food. Now not only is the table mortified, but so is the whole cafe, check and mate. Believe it or not, I could go on forever about the low points in cafes I've witnessed over the last 20 years. And at some point I just may. For now, I want you to know if we are to revolutionize the service quality points behind cafes, we have to put in much more planning and execution. Such as deliberately leaving high risk food out on the table to spoil like meat and then serving it. Tasting with your fingers in full view of the customer. Overcharging the customer on purpose. Penalizing the customer for leaving food on the plate. Then eating it in front of them. Wearing the same uniform three days in a row. Flat out cancelling an order because the spend wasn't enough. Making up fake excuses why the prices go up 50% on Wednesdays. And my favorite, leveraging online platforms to boast about the epicness of your in-house debacles. By now, I hope you're understanding that I'm making a serious joke about a serious situation within the cafe industry. Because I am. Remember in the beginning, I talked about disappointment and it lasting a lifetime? Is that a reality you really want? Because bankruptcy does. There's nothing that saddens me more about this industry I've called home for over 20 years. As much as the horrifying reports of customer service. While the cafes may be more of a zoo than an orchestrated symphony, it's clear that both coffee and avocado on toast are here to stay. The average consumer may now be more apprehensive than they once were at where they dine out, and I would totally condone this. One incredible way to increase the quality of an industry is by demanding it through your spending habits and your feedback. Good managers and owners are always interested to hear about these metrics and always find ways to outperform their competition. This could be one of the major reasons why 60% of all hospitality businesses go out of business within the first year. Think about this, if you as an owner or an employee have ever received a bad review, it's startling. If you address it the right way, not only will you win your mistake back, you'll show your onlookers that you can be trusted. I believe that you can turn something terrible into something great, especially if you apply the right intentions. Check this out. Out of the 121 reviews I found on TripAdvisor, 78% of them were either good or excellent, leaving an endearing 22% at either average, poor or terrible. Hey, the 80-20 rule. One thing is evident with all of these venues, Years ago, some of them had skating reviews, but now in the present, they have raving fans. Maybe a change of ownership. But let's say the ownership didn't change, but rather the attitude of the management style was what transformed. To me, this is just a work of art. So how did they do it? Here's my two cents. The absolute main complaint that came up in my research was service oriented. 
With that in mind, an owner or a manager would have overhauled the service process. How long a customer has to wait to be seated, the greeting process, the seating process, what to do if there's a wait for the table to become free, the sales process, the promotions process, quality checks at the tables, offering for further purchase, hygiene and grooming, uniform standards, and cleaning of the premises. With these bulk improvements, those TripAdvisor moments will be a light to both customer and owner. As a chef, one thing I relished was the opportunity to speak to customers and promote new specials and menu items before they were released. This created some buzz around what was happening and incorporated the customer into the creative process. Usual today, John, is a surefire way to initiate a limited purchase price for that customer. Instead, offer new ideas and let them make the decision. Did you know that most of the time a new offering isn't bought on the first time? It takes multiple offerings over a period of time. This is the fun part where servers and waiters can get creative in the conversation process and make that customer feel really special and appreciated. With that comes long-term custom and good, if not excellent reviews. Besides the customer experience, also known as making the customer happy, there's another really scary reason to do a great job in the service department. Statistically, cafes will not compete in the long run. They will fail. In part to the challenges above, but even more so because there's a shortage of staff. I've witnessed many cafes address this tactic by having coffee staff moonlight as chefs, calling them all rounders. This may work for some of the more easier menu items but think about this, how good is the food really going to be? Not to mention the financial implications that a chef has to fulfill, such as wastage control, menu costing, product sourcing, and delivery of meals in a timely fashion during busy rush hour. These areas take time to learn and years to master. You're wondering why people would employ this tactic? Because they're cheaper than chefs. They may save money in the short term, but they will cost you your business in the long run. With chef shortages, that will take a generation to solve. However, I've seen some great and creative problem solving being done around the country with the emerging sandwich culture. They now come with all the bells and whistles, pickles, relishes, fancy garnishes and breads, one innovative sandwich cafe in Sydney charges $59 for a full blood Wagyu sandwich. Amazing. Now, if, come on, if that doesn't spark curiosity, I don't know what will. And the name of that sandwich megalith? Sendo Ichi. I know what you're thinking. I'm a small operator. I can't do that kind of thing. And you don't need to. In fact, I would advise against it. Instead, innovate one step at a time. Consider both the financial and the final product in your innovations. What that means is to consider who you're selling to and what they would like and how much they are willing to spend on your products. Then balance the profit margins accordingly. Please tell me you've got profit goals. Anyways, balance the profits you're aiming for with the cost of goods you're selling. If a sandwich costs $3.50 to produce, you must sell it for at least $10.50. This is a steal in the current sandwich climate. Many places are selling sandwiches for $15 or more. This isn't your basic ham and cheese toasty, by the way. There's a lot of value added. I think even the cooking enthusiast can come up with a great saleable sandwich. Now, it might seem crazy that people miss this. When opening a business like a cafe, where literally the name of the industry is the hint as to what the goal is, hospitality. I empathize, however, because the dream is to create perfection, art, and sensation for the customer, and to provide mastery in a space which doesn't easily accommodate mistakes or hangovers. It may be, by moral standards, an underpaid industry, making it less attractive for people entering the workforce, but it is the cornerstone of humanity. It is the weekend or weekday escape humans get from their mundane tasks. A chance to eat or drink something enlivening. Clearly people are going to eat out. Clearly people are going to pay big money for an exhilarating experience. But because cafes are outgrowing the rate at which people can buy coffee and brunch, you're left in a quandary. You've got to decide what are they paying for? Your gorgeous establishment with incompetent staff or staff that deliver on every single promise. 